for whatever reason, like, if a guy was to lift up his shirt and he shows me, like, a knife wound, a knife stab, it's like, wow, you literally... That, do you know how attractive that is? Because it's like, wow, you literally was fighting for your life. And you overcome, like, that was a big challenge and you're actually still here. That's an ach achievement in itself. Like, okay, I see you don't give up. That's good. Where are we going to end? At first it was prison, now it's somebody surviving. <laughs> What they used to say, oh, I need a man that makes a hundred thousand pounds a year. We need a provider. I said, calm. Me personally, money's never going to be an issue. Then they said, we need a man that's six foot. I kind of, uh, I kind of got scared there because I'm like five ten. Now this, this is where you draw the line. Now you want someone who's got a chef before, and I don't understand. Is the more scars the better? If that's the case, then you want someone who's a victim. For whatever reason, like if a guy was to lift up his shirt and he shows me like a knife wound. A knife stab is like wow you literally that do you know how attractive that is uh i don't know about all that but i will tell you what the most attractive thing that a man oh, can do oh. objectively <laughs> okay you can't tell me i'm wrong all right the most attractive oh, oh. thing that a man can do is cry okay hear me out, hear me out, hear me especially the first time he cried yeah okay so fellas it's up to you if you want to listen to these women who date you for a week and after you expose yourself and then they leave you it's up to you eyes around you like it shows that he's finally able to be vulnerable like that is so attractive like he's literally weeping like <laughs> like all on you but like like it's like beautiful low-key like the crying is daily if it's multiple times a day mm, we're gonna have to reassess but but for the most part it's it's a beautiful thing objectively let me cook let me cook okay i'll show you i'll show you an example <sighs> You're not gonna tell me that's not attractive. You're not gonna tell me that that didn't make you. Guys, this is evidence enough that most of the women out there, they don't like you. This is messed up, bro. White mom tucks right on her son's face. Bro, call child service or something, bro. What the, bro? This is super messed up, bro. This is mad. This is overly too messed up. This is actually bad, bro. Why? Why would you do that, bro? That's a low kid, and you are, bro, that's bad, bro. She gotta be a sexy Ray fan or something, bro. What the fuck? That's as she... <laughs> you, 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 you can never uh, understand. What is she trying to achieve there? He made him cry by dancing with his mom. <laughs> I feel bad for you. Oh. That's very sad. He's crying. That's very sad. That's very sad. And she's laughing. Oh, she's still... <laughs> she's still having a great time and the sad is crying. This is another, I mean, unfit parent. You can say because that's parenting right there. She's felt to be a parent. Oh, she needed this to behave for a few minutes at the party because the sun is there and she's felt to be a parent. And now you look at the, the, the young man, he, even him, he knows that's wrong. That's the reason why he's crying because he's seen, I have to raise myself now. He's feeling pity for himself. I have to raise myself now because I don't have a parent. If she can do that, like, what is she going to teach him that's good? I'm just saying here, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section. This is so beyond wrong. As a mother, you have a duty to be ethically and morally upright in front of your children. Not just because they can see you and how you behave will socially ostracize you and them by association, but because you are their mother, their guide in life, their beacon. Children often look to their mothers for knowing what is right and what is wrong. Mothers set the tone for morals and ethics and values in their children. Where fathers direct, mothers instill. 
this boy is supposed to look to his mom for an example of what being a good, moral, and decent person looks like. Every moment of his young life is preparation for his eventual adult life. She is failing him by not giving him an example of healthy morality. I can't imagine the shame and embarrassment this boy must feel seeing his mother grind herself in public on a man and all the other adults around her laughing. Where's the shame in the black community? Where is the social discipline we are supposed to give each other when we do things like this in our community? Because that's love. Disciplining each other, helping each other be better, telling each other do better, that's love. And we don't have that for each other. Pray for this boy and his mom. I think what would help women to become appropriately radicalized is to realize that men have never been providers of anything at all. As far as relationships go, women have been the only ones to provide anything in relationships to begin with. Oh, but men go to work. Okay, so do women. To provide means to give access to. A woman now has access to her own right to work. Oh, you no longer provide that. If you are a man that works while the woman stays home, you're actually not providing anything. You are compensating her for the work that she provides you. And you're compensating her for the fact that she provided you children. But that's what it means to be a provider. So when women never used to work, men used to go to work and make the money. And then women will take care of the kids. That's what provider means. And women, on the other end, what they are doing at home is nurturing. So I don't know what she's talking about here. <laughs> what are you talking about? And that she provides you a clean house and a home-cooked meal every night. So she's providing, you are just compensating. And that's what I think men and women really need to understand these days. The terms of engagement are no longer the same. The things that men used to provide to women were not things that men themselves had to work for. They were simply rights that weren't given to women to make them dependent on men. To be dependent on someone is not to be provided for. It's to have access by proxy to your most basic needs and your basic survival. That's not actually provision. The things that women grant men access to within relationships are valuable and men don't have access to them outside of a relationship with a woman. And these are things that tangibly improve men's lives. A woman's basic tasks are going to look largely the same, whether she lives with a man or not. And the only thing that changes when she moves in with a man is that her tasks don't. We are not trying to take away how much work that uh, women put in. Even in a relationship, in marriage, is so much. I mean, to raise kids, we've all been raised by women, right? Yes, yeah, so we, we, we're not going to stand on a mountain to say, no, what I do doesn't matter. I mean, they are, I mean, they are everything that when it comes to, to raising kids, people, us, human beings. But like when you also try to discredit what also men do or what men used to do, these things have changed, I mean. We are no longer in the times where just men used to work. But I, I don't get it. <laughs> Guys, subscribe to the channel and thumbs up on the video. I'll see you in the next